What's up, everybody? It's Joe LaPuma. You are listening. You are watching the Complex Sneakers podcast. I'm with my guy, Mr. Matt Welty. Haven't seen you in a while. Feels like yesterday, though. <laughs> and to my left, Mr. Brendan Dunn. And I haven't seen you guys in a while because I'm currently on vacation. You are on as, vacation. As people are listening to this. Or no, wait, no, I think I'm back from vacation by the time people hear this. Let me tell you, he strolled in the office with his little Ramoa <laughs> in, in tow, is it what they say? Yeah, he, the roller this bag. Guy, straight to the clear port. Are you excited? I am excited. I'm nervous. Nervous. You know, these days traveling is not an easy thing. There's okay. a lot of T's you got to cross, a lot of I's you got to dot. And I don't mean like the I in Ohio, you know. Okay. When they dot. I, sorry, I'm taking yeah, it back to been, Ohio State already. The, right. the band dots the I and it's got yeah, it. Sorry. sorry. And that, and that guy road? totally ate it. <laughs> is that right? I sent you a video of it. Oh, I guess you didn't pick up on it, but. The guy, the ringleader or whatever. Oh, the band, I saw that. I saw he that. He was running towards the field and he tripped and he yeah, fell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he sorry, fell I'm sorry first. to take us back. I'm still. That's I'm okay. Still, I'm still. Uh, so say you're, you're still. Still ad, uh, revving, amped reveling? off the gamma. Yeah, happy about the Oregon win. Anyways, where were we? So I know that you don't get, like to give up your location. I was trying to pry a little bit. Where are you mm -hmm, going? But mm -hmm. you, I, you don't have to tell us. The, the, here's how you could tell I'm going on vacation is because I have the Hoka's on. I don't know how. That, how that's how, like your like. Go to. That's my easiest travel shoe. Do you guys have a, You're like a, a one shoe yes. guy when it comes to traveling? Right. I mean, lately I've done a little bit more because I used to just travel with a tote bag. Like I would go to the Middle East for two weeks and just have a black Nike tote bag with me. Now, okay. now that I have the Ramoa on deck, I'll throw a pair of loafers in there or a backup pair or something like that. So we went to we went to Malaysia, Joe. <laughs> I heard about this. But I, to be fair, Malaysia was just like four days. Yeah. Okay. But. I was thinking in the back of my head because we're going to like a sneaker event for two or three days or whatever to like mm -hmm. bring like multiple pairs. Just shows up in the most cooked pair of, <laughs> of Reeboks and just wear the same shoes the whole time. I am what I am. And what about the Yeezy Foams? Are they, I'm trying to put together where. Here's the thing. Is the Yeezy Foams coming on this vacation? Yeezy Foam Runners are not in okay. the luggage right now. The Yeezy Foam Runner takes up a lot of space in your you luggage as well. Because you can't compress it. Exactly. Do you guys have go-to travel sneakers? Do you, what, what, what is the standard for you? Uh, the ones that I fly in now are zoom a zoom fly the mm -hmm. zoom flies that i id'd mm -hmm. and i i've been for the past eight years i travel in the same suit the kith run set mm -hmm. yeah. uh suit super comfortable paper thin and then no that's but but basically the zoom fly is oh is been on yeah so you can slide every, on and off that's a exactly you i haven't a I, sneaker? I haven't flown yet since uh i haven't flown since pre-pandemic mm. but i do think that the New Balance like 990s to me are like the perfect like airport shoe. I know yeah. they don't. What about flight though? A little heavy for the flight. They or don't no? compress as well, but the biggest um, plus or minus of a shoe, I think, is how easy it goes on and off your foot. Yes, so, at the airport. Yeah, go through security. And the thing is with the New Balances is you don't have to tie them. Yeah, and you don't have to like readjust the tongue when you slide your foot in. Yeah, that's some that's some insider uh, expert info. That's what you. I didn't understand. Flying a trainer really good. That, still. but that's okay. what I don't you understand know? because that shoe's a total pain in the ass to get on and off your foot. The which one? The fly knits. Fly knit trainer. You have to you no. Have to, you have to lace it pretty much like uh, every single not time. If, not if the laces are loose. This man is yeah, taking a lot they, of flight. But then that shoe, but that shoe like. You, you know can't how, really wear it as loose. Well, you can't because yeah. the, the tongue, the tongue is so wishy-washy on yeah, that Yeah, but shoe. when you, you when you're not going far, the tongue is so light to your point, but it comes right off and it's super light. But that shoe, it's like if it's unlaced a little bit, it's like the laces just like it's Jam like up, it's like the right? no, it's like the floodgates like break loose and that shoe just goes flying off your foot. It doesn't uh. go flying, but it is loose. But I like it because it's loose. I did that for. Before I was wearing the one that I wear now, I did the Flyknit trainer. I have a no lot. idea if I still have any Flyknit trainers. I, do. I actually think about that sometimes because I had the first two pairs that came out, the red and the blue, and I don't know. I sold one of them way back then, but I, I really hope I have a pair of Flyknit trainers. I have the white, black. Yeah, of one. course, yeah. Oh wait, no, but I have the, the multicolor. I have the multicolor. Oh, the multicolor is yeah. so good. That was such a fun moment. All those multicolor yeah. Flyknits. So good. And MDs used to be. Good to travel in, or I guess that maybe they <laughs> were good to wear in general. <laughs> yeah, or you know, because that shoe goes on and off your foot. And funny tidbit about that shoe that I think most people forget is that 
actual naming of the shoe was uh, yeah, a nod right. to traveling because NMD stands for Nomad. Nomad. Interesting. Yeah, that was a very peak era of brands taking vowels out of things in order to make them look edgy or Bad cool. for SEO. <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk a little bit about the Met Gala? That's that's yeah, kind of in the rear view at this point. Yeah, we haven't we haven't talked about it yet. And there were some big fits. There was some big fits. I did say on last yeah. episode yeah. that there always is a sneaker moment. You and sure it. enough, we record our last podcast. We all leave. And then I think 15 minutes later, I hit the slack and Virgil put kind of like his mm -hmm. almost an outfit grid, right? Ah, shout out to Dennis. Shout yeah, out yeah. To Dennis, Can almost you, an outfit we, grid. We need you to make the judgment. Special Louis Vuitton Air Force Ones. Yeah, with the Ghanaian flag on the back. Those Louis Vuitton Air Force Ones look better and better every time I see them. I, I think I said this before, but... I'm going to make a real effort to get that shoe. I know it's going to be an impossible to get shoe, but and Wealthy is smirking at me. Yeah. And Wealthy, I will do this just like the Lightning Fours, just yeah. to put it on record that Wait, I want it. Wait, you're going to get the Ghanaian Air it. Force One? No, not the Ghanaian okay. Air Force One, just a, a Louis Vuitton Air Force One in general, because I want that shoe and I want to wear that shoe. So it's important to say it on record so that I can be held accountable. I mean, and I know what's it's retail going to be on that shoe? I don't it's know, like, but if I get a chance to pay retail for it, you know what? Two thousand dollars. I'll spend it. Okay. I'll put it. Put it out there. Put it into the universe. Because right. into the. Ether. I mean, I don't know how. If it was true or not, because there was rumors, just put it out there. There was mm -hmm. rumors going around because there was like that sneaker looking box. There was like an orange right, box. Right, and right, People, and I don't want to say that that's what it is, but there was a Louis Vuitton box that looked about the size. It was the same color as a Nike box. Yeah. It looks about the size of a Nike box. So people were wondering if that may be the the packaging right a company can't, can't shoes. confirm that yeah. but if it did come with crazy packaging i just imagine that would just ratchet the keep the packaging <laughs> yeah the, no the, i'm a, just saying the, pri the, the price tag <laughs> yeah on yeah because yeah, we're trying to figure out like what the price tag is on yeah. that shoe 21 color if they even release which i think they will uh, but, who else timothy chalamet showed up in the converse chuck taylor's in sweatpants yeah, i think a little, little questionable former two-time complex sneakers podcast guest jerry lorenzo oh i thought you were gonna say timothy i was like i don't know oh, no, timothy no. sorry no Yep. Uh, Jerry Lorenzo in S S the Fear of God sweats and the mule. Yeah, those mules are good. good. Looking shoe. If I had, if I had those, I would have packed them in the travel. Okay. In the travel bag. Yeah. But can we can we talk about the Converse moment? Because you yeah, know I'm what? sorry, we switched so quickly. No, 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 no. It's all good. I don't even know about this. Yeah, he wore Chuck Taylors. Yeah. I, you know what? I've been seeing so Timothy. many Chuck Taylors, and I mentioned this to you guys earlier. So many of the chunky Chuck Taylors. I, I forget oh, yeah. what that, that silhouette is called, the, the Converse Run Star Hike with the big platform on bottom. When did this shoe become so huge? J.W. Anderson kind of let it out there, but it's not officially attached to that anymore. Do you know the one I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Chuck High with the big platform on mm -hmm. bottom. I feel like you see like a lot of women wearing it around the city. That, that sneaker is like ubiquitous at this point. It's becoming the new Converse with the hearts on them. I, I, I don't know how that happens so quick. And there's, a, there's another one with the wavy midsole. I feel like that shoe is really big right now. Yeah, so see, you know the one. Once you see it, you know. And I've seen people wearing, I think it's that, is it the undercover collab that kind of has that extra, like, wrap around yeah, the midsole? Yeah, I've yeah. seen that a few times actually out in public. A lot of those big fashion. People like those big fashion. Yeah, chunky, chunky soul. Yeah, which doesn't make a lot of sense for Converse to me, but hey, I guess it's a hit. I'm just checking right now. We're 100% sure. Converse Run Star Hike? You know the one. You yeah, know, but that's not you, what he wore. No, 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 that's not what he wore. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just Sorry. saying I see that sneaker everywhere. Got it. I misunderstood. In terms of converse moments, you know? Any any other bit? Oh, I mean, we got to talk about the chain, right? The chain. Ben <laughs> yeah. Baller did the chain. Ben cause... Baller, come back on the pod. We need Ben Baller yeah. on the pod in studio. Hopefully yeah, that's we what get I mean. that yep. done yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. Ben Baller cause Kid Cuddy. Six figures. They said it cost six figures just to build the chain. Not even, not even the, not even the the diamonds, just like the actual like w work that went into that thing, yeah. crazy chain, and it's an actual cause collaboration. Yeah. It's not just they made something that is in the shape of a cause piece. It's like cause was involved in the making of it. Ben We're, Baller and Kid Cudi have done a lot of great chains recently. This one, the backpack opens level, on backpack the backpack yeah. opens, <laughs> yeah. And we were no because we were like saying like, oh, why did he do like the was it the VMA? cause thing and we're like oh cuddy's the man on the moon, the moon man. yeah 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 and one one cool sneaker moment that popped up from that i don't know if you guys saw but ben baller posted on twitter the rarely seen cause jordan one low so yes. the white jordan one low without yeah. the swoosh that they have the x's embroidered on the back yeah. that he wore at the brooklyn museum event launching the jordan four where wealthy and i stood out in the rain well i wasn't there you weren't there for some reason i thought i remember no you i trying wasn't to talk to cause about the shoe no that i night. talked to i think we had mentioned this before i interviewed cause 
when he did his Uniqlo right, collaboration. But did you ask him about those Jordan 1 lows? At so that the moment? reason why he had the Jordan 1 lows is because I'm pretty sure he said that he doesn't like to wear the cause Jordan 4 in public because I don't know if, I mean, for all the people out there who like have never like interacted with cause or like haven't really seen him talk because he's not as much of like a public speaking figure yeah. he's like a pretty and this isn't a shot or anything just kind no, of like a quiet guy socially awkward a little like you know quiet you know like <laughs> no i'm not saying in a weird way he just like he doesn't he, no I but that, trying to avoid negative words no i'm not but i'm but that's no but that's where i'm that's where he kind of went with it yeah. where he doesn't like to have interactions with people about it where he's like oh I'm wearing the shoes and I don't want to have an awkward conversation with someone on the train who's like, oh, are those the yeah. cause shoes? And they're like, oh, aren't you cause? And he's like, I want to avoid mm. th that. So he had Jordan Brand make him the lows. They Jordan remind me of the- With the X's on the back. They remind me of the sneakers that Jordan wore in the last dance. What were those called? Yeah. The, uh, the center court. Yeah, with the wings yeah. wrapping around the back. Kind of a clean shoe. I think those actually came out this year. Yeah, that's they, what Jordan wore in the it heavily in the last dance. Uh, not so inconspicuous marketing moment. Yeah. If you had one shot to get a Ben Baller chain, what would it be? <laughs> I thought about that. A Ben Baller chain? Well, yeah, just the like, just the, I mean- I don't have that answer, but what would yours be? I have a few. I have a few guesses for wealthy. But oh, I, don't I thought know you said a few thoughts. <laughs> oh man, I don't. I really. That's like. What about does does? How can I put this? Does your group of friends who engage in football activities together? Is there a logo for that group? There is, of but I, with all due respect, I don't think that I would get that on a chain. No, okay. that's that's like a little. You wouldn't flood that out. No, I feel like that's like a group little... chat, little shaky. Maybe you don't want to <laughs> the group chat. Oh, no, no, maybe. He's not, he's not, he, hold on, hold he's on. He's not talking about. He wasn't talking about that. He meant like the guys from the soccer game. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Hold on. Yeah, Armenian flag. Dude, with the, with I feel like I would colored look, diamonds. I, I feel like you'd look so crazy walking. I up. would, but you wouldn't. No, I mean I. You, you would look nuts. <laughs> You'd look nuts. I Spezial logo? You know what's weird? <laughs> Spezial <laughs> logo would be hard as a chain. A pendant? Yeah. I feel like if, if, anyone, if anyone could do like a character, which Ben Bowler does a bunch, I yeah. feel like you... Your chain could be like a caricature of Maybe yourself. like the one, the Igor one that Tyler has. Like yeah. Big head with the mustache. And Tyler also has the ones where he's holding like the trunks. Yeah, yeah. insane. Didn't, insane. wasn't Virgil wearing a crazy yeah, chain he, last he night also, too? Debuted a uh, chain. And Frank Ocean had on the Homer chain. Yes. Did you buy any Homer pieces yet, Joe? I didn't go. What was that okay. thing that he was carrying? Uh, uh, robot, robot Baby. baby. Yeah. yeah. Velvet Prada, though. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What is your Ben Baller chain going to look like? Because I, I feel like of the three of us, so, you're you're way closer to getting no, a Ben no, Baller no, chain no. than Wealthy is or than I am. Like, no, so way, way closer. I, th I had the thought last night, but I yes. didn't follow through. I don't think it would be initials, though. I don't know. I don't know. Italian flag? What about a cannoli? What about a... <laughs> What about a cannoli with the baguettes <laughs> oh, in it? No. You got, oh wow! <laughs> what a little green sprinkles. That could be yeah. hard. You got a, one single rigatoni on like around the neck. <laughs> wow! Ooh, Whoa. like it's, it's it's just like actual the spi the spiral. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh man, the rigatoni on a on a on a thin chain. <laughs> what a fun exercise hard. that would be. Would you get the horn? Nah, I wore the horn when I was little, though. And remind me what the horn is, because we've talked about this Italian, it's just like or Italian it, tradition It's supposed before, to, like, ward off, like, negative... And could you blow on it, like the back of the Salehi shoe? No. Dude, that we need to talk... <laughs> that was funny, because we were discussing it earlier, because yeah. I had, like, made a joke saying that I wish the, the horn had... Or the whistle had sounded like Lord of the Rings, where... I don't know if you guys have seen that movie, but... Uh, you don't know if we've seen Lord of the Rings? No, because I thought you said you had seen The Hobbit, but I didn't know if you had seen, seen Lord of the Rings. I've seen Lord of the Rings. Yeah, there's a scene where... Gimli Wait. I have Gimli oh the dwarf. God. I know. I know Gimli the bad. dwarf in Twin Towers like blows the horn, and yeah. it's like a significant part of the movie. And it's like boom. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it'd be awesome if that's how the like the whistle actually sounded. Officially licensed collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> but some someone hit me up and goes, someone's gonna turn this into a bong. And amazing, we support that. And or, Brendan's like, we, we need to get that? a we need to get a commission. <laughs> I won't use it, but I just think it, it'll be a good exercise in I mean, sneaker customization. It's going to be like one of our biggest IG posts of someone smoking weed out of a Salehi shoe. You're right? really putting that in the. We need Action Bronson the, uh, to do it, maybe? Oh, wow. <laughs> I know that's his guy. Can it we is set his that guy. Up? If, he, he, if, he, that if he rips a dab out of. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, can we talk about the shoes we have on? We, we don't always, yeah. but I'm a little bit interested in both of your guys' footwear because Joe, I noticed, did somebody sign the midsole no. of you, the black hat fours you're wearing right now? The other side, right? No. Going and endless summer. 
you wrote on it. Yeah. Got you. Because I, I wasn't sure. I saw that on there. I was like, is that a, is that a mark or what, what's happening nope, there? No, just my, my... Can you explain the whole Endless Summer thing? Because I know that came up on one of the previous No, episodes. just that, just, um, well, it felt like every day went into yeah. the next because yeah. we were at home. Yeah. Uh, well, someone had said that. No, because just someone had said that on yeah, one comment, of the comment, right? Yeah, one of them was so it was like, oh, Joe, and, and they said endless summer, and, and I think we were talking about Black Cat Fours or something like that at the time. Because I must have mentioned it yeah. on a pod on a earlier podcast. Yeah. Right? Oh, I see. Yeah. It was one of the first there. pods that, or it was maybe the first pod that we did together in studio. Not in not, but you in know the, why? The center stage. This might have this might have happened if you look at the Sharpie, it might've happened when we were signing those hundreds of books and I just took the metallic silver Sharpie and wrote it. Always gotta have the metallic silver Sharpie on you. And Wealthy, what are these Adidas you're wearing? These I are like these the a lot. I have Adidas no idea what this clean. Is. EQT Race Walk. Clean. And it's just a random inline pair? Uh, I think this is, it. well, it is part of the whole, I guess they're doing the whole EQT thing and this is, an yeah, OG, yeah. So this is just an OG colorway. So I guess it's inline, but. I love that sneaker. You know, the Looks fans good. are asking for a kit cam. I know you guys have the yeah. kit cam for full kit size cam. on. Yeah, how do we make ours different? Do you guys want to see that? Let us know in the comments. We got to get it sponsored by someone. Let's get Dave Matthews on it. <laughs> we got to get a sponsor just for that, and they can, like, clean our shoes every week or something. Like I said, I've been thinking a lot about cleaning sneakers yeah. lately, and I want all my stuff to be regularly clean. So maybe um, maybe somebody can make it. Maybe Dave Matthews can make it happen. One quick thing that might be funny um, before we move on, something I had brought up that I was surprised that was nostalgic for a lot of people. That I feel like we all have a lot of thoughts or feelings about the Jordan right. Future. <laughs> Jordan Future, my story to the Jordan Future. You know what it is, right? Yeah, tell us. You know it? No, I was, we were there in the office. Joe... When that shoe first came out, so you randomly tweeted about this because I think we were discussing. We it were or discussing about it. Was it was such a moment, and I fr and I uh, just made it a joke about you know oh all the resellers nowadays don't remember the shoe. It was and I'm only sure everybody said you were a gatekeeper for just no no they weren't, but everyone okay. was telling me their stories about how they remember that shoe and all yeah. the pairs that they bought. Yeah, that shoe first came out. We all thought it was kind of cool because it was a footscape with the Jordan 11 sole. Jordan 11s were so big at that time. It was kind of more of a wearable lifestyle take on the Jordan 11, and. I wore it a lot. We were hyped on it, but then Joe was mad. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no this no, is no. not the same story, but go okay. ahead. Oh, okay. no, I thought, well, I know that you have the, the Marrow story That's behind the it. story. No, but the other part of it was is that Joe, and this was like. What, a, a list? No, this was very like, I guess when the things that you get nitpicky about is you were like, the shoe's awesome, but all the people who were debuting it were wearing baggy jeans, and you're like, they're ruining it. Oh mm. man! Really? They were ruining. I had a pair. They were ruining the shoe, and <laughs> I, you maybe write a story about like don't let baggy jeans ruin what? your opinion of the jo of the Jordan future. Is that what Sending was happening? Shots? Sending shots from the byline. Is yeah. that what was happening? And I think in the middle of it, we needed to show them how to do it. So you had the Saint Laurent jeans on that oh, paired it with the Jordan wow. future, and you're like, you're like, I, I vaguely let's... remember. And, and, you, and we're like in the middle of the office, like right in front of like NCBs, like the walkway right there. Okay. And you were just like posted up, and we had to get a quick snap of like the the pant to so Jordan to future. It, son. <laughs> oh God, wow. That's yeah, interesting. What I, though. That's interesting. what I remember about Jordan future. I, I really like that Somebody shoe. Somebody please dig up the photo. I really like that they shoe. Will. But the the other Jordan future. Jesus and Mero, they had the podcast here yeah, and they had the, the show here. And Mero, I think, is the same size as me. And he was like, Do you have, like, he was in my office one day? I think Wale was there that day, actually. He I was had, always like, Joe LaPuma, what are you going to hook me up with yeah, shoes? Yeah, when are you yeah. going to make me cool? And I gave him a pair of Jordan Futures, but it was the Jordan brand classic. Yeah, the JBC, arguably the, the black best and gold one. ones. Yeah, yeah. those were It clean. was, they, at the time, they were going for like over $1,000. <laughs> yeah. And Which I didn't is know. insane to yeah. think about for a Jordan future, you know, now. Yeah, but Mero's my boy. I hope he still has them. They're definitely... Cooked at this point? No, or or s someone on StockX, maybe. <laughs> you think so? No, no I think, I he, wore, no, I think he wore them. Yeah. He actually, like, wore them out. He wore them out of the office They both day. have great that. shoe collections now, so they don't they don't need us anymore, but... We need them. Dunn, yeah. do you have any, uh, you know... Jordan future Did you ever memories? own a pair? I wore them a lot. I had one pair. Talk about good air travel shoes, maybe. <laughs> I don't think I ever owned a pair of Jordan Futures. My strongest memories of that shoe were just helping to leak all the 40 colorways that were coming out. But you remember day. how, like, much that shoe was, like, a big thing at the yeah, time? Yeah, like, yeah, People yeah. were yes. very excited about and it. And it was a way for Jordan brand to sell the Jordan 11 DNA without having to do more than the yearly Jordan 11 release in December. Really unlock that silhouette throughout the course of the year, you know, yeah. rather than just... Drop a million pairs in December. And as quick as it came, 
quick as it went. Yeah, but it's not like a terrible shoe in no, retrospect, right? Like I, I still I still got love for the Jordan future. I don't know if I put a pair on today. I don't have the Saint Laurent jeans to go with, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a good shoes. And I'm glad we're talking about giving sneakers away because it does tie very much to our eBay question of the week for our winner. Joe, do you want to read out the question for us? Sure. Comes from Cole out of Denver, Colorado. If you could go back to the beginning of your sneaker collecting career, is there anything you would have done differently? So before we get into answering the question, Welty, why don't you bring out the sneakers that we are giving away this Other week? Other side. <laughs> I didn't want to bump into the mic again. Yeah. Got to pivot. It's yep. fine. That's funny. Yep. So we are giving away a pair of sneakers each week on the Complex Sneakers Podcast with eBay. Authenticity guaranteed. You can see the tag on there. Welty, before you crack the box open, I just got to give the PSA how you get the shoes ask us a question go to ebay.complex.com submit your question for us to ask we will pick a question we will hand select it if we read your question on air and we address it then we will send you a free pair of shoes so we are sending out this pair of shoes wealthy what's the pair of shoes so i think we have a consistent theme yeah back uh, to back yeah and you pick these out yes he's smiling as as I, this is funny because i know this is a shoe that uh brendan dunn maybe have negative feelings towards but Ooh, spicy this is the sh this I'm, su I'm surprised but go ahead this is another shoe that i just wanted back in the day yeah but why didn't you ever get the shoe back in the day? uh you know what it's one of those things i probably could have gotten i just passed on it i, I didn't pass on outlets it outlets a lot is this a, is it this wasn't a hard it wasn't at the, now it wasn't at the outlets that i was at okay so i remember it being online but i didn't want to like order from like overseas or something like that but yeah. anyways this is the para air maxim one not max interesting and not the magazine yep. no and i'm pretty sure this is jesse leva it looks like a jesse leva <laughs> it looks like a jesse leva shoe yeah. and what was the difference the fly the material what is it called flies yeah there's like a no, well uh fl there's like a fly wire up fly wire. it's a little stretchy and i i don't think the mids i thought that for some reason i thought the midsole was more of like a free shape but it wasn't um now i'm a little bit surprised because in my head wealthy is the type of guy who would only want the original air max dude, one dude i i was so into the para stuff okay. that i don't know to me these shoes look amazing um i know we had given away the par air max 95s a few weeks ago mm -hmm. um, brand here. but yeah para air max um ones <laughs> Mm. <laughs> no man. So no wait, why magazine. why would he have feelings to it? just because it's not like, the original? Yeah, I, just I told him how much I love this shoe at one point. Yeah. He's like, "Well, I don't." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if my response was that blunt, but I never really appreciated that sneaker. It was always, to me, a consolation prize after the you know Pata Para ones and yeah. all, all the Pata ones. But we're giving these away, and you are winning these, so we we hope you enjoy. And them. also, and not that it's like matters that much, but like I feel like. Or not, I feel like I know that the actual like Pata Para Air Max ones are like so expensive at this point. That's a that's a real grail for me. Yeah, that's... those shoes are like like four thousand oh dollars, and it's God. like uh, probably not gonna be able to get my hands on those. Yeah, probably not gonna be able to get your feet in those one day, one day. All right, so let's talk about it. We're discussing the sneakers that we've given away that we've regretted, some stuff that has left our collection kind of broadly, things we used to own that we don't anymore. Joe, do you have anything like that? I can't remember specifically giving away a pair of shoes that I regretted, but I know that my mom has given away a bunch from like the basement. Hold and on, your mom just has carte blanche to, to do what she wants with those shoes? Back in the day, she did. Back in the day, did you she... know that? No, be... no, you would just go. I would just go looking for a pair of sneakers. Wh which one there. was the most oh uh, notable? That That's like, the most so no stressful. Well, the most notable one was the Flint Jordan 9, mm -hmm. which I loved because I remember at UConn, Karam Butler wore them early. Yes, Kar of, Karam course. Butler, yeah, of course. Karam Butler was wearing all the Jordans early, and the Flint Blue 9, which hasn't returned. The 9s, when I was in college, the 9s were popular. I was wearing the regular Deuce tray on bag, number 9 Jordans with the Deuce tray on bag. The the um, white and black 9, but the olive 9 I wore definitely for a winter at yeah. UConn. Like, because I can it see that. felt like the Tim it looked like a Timberland, but he debuted the Flint 9s. He got them early, and I think when he came through the complex office, he said that he was getting them from someone in Queens, like all the Jordans early. I thought of, mm. yeah. Do you have like a Karam Butler like bobblehead or something yes, like that? Yes, a big statue. I remember, <laughs> I remember you yeah, getting that, was, that in the yeah. office. Yeah, yeah that was a that's big That's my guy. Shouts to Karan. But uh, I had, the what? You I'm, said, that's Karan. my guy. Shout out to Karan. But, and I said, Lert. Oh, 
Butler. Got it. Got Thank it. Got you. it. Okay. Carry on. So you're too quick sometimes. But uh, the Flint Jordan 9, I definitely had, and this is years ago, in the basement, like pretty, you know, I didn't wear them a lot once I got them. And then they were gone. And I remember just showing my mom, like. Did you snap? Like a picture. <laughs> like, of, do you do you recognize these? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, you just, just level with me. Did you give these away? <laughs> and she... She admitted it. She yeah. admitted that she yeah. gave the sneakers away. And when I shot Damian Lillard in Portland a couple years ago, uh huh. Shout out to Index Portland. Oh, they had them on deck in my size. Did you get them? They gave me a pair. Yeah, love that. They gave me a pair, shout and out I to had Mikey, them. Shout out to T. Those probably aren't wearable, right? Uh, Wait, aren't those shoes white? Are you. Oh. That might they be are. the whitest shoe that Joe LaFuma <laughs> yes. has ever worn. Wore, that's funny, though, because I did wear the, the original nines, too. Those were Wasn't right. a big deal to you back then. Interesting. Uh, Joe LaFuma definitely not copping the Carolina Blue Kicks nines. <laughs> uh, but the Flint 9, which, yeah, shout out to Index. I do have those in my collection. Do you now. know who got them? You're, you're, you're who your mother no. gave them away to? No, I don't. But I hope they enjoyed them. Wealthy, is there a sneaker that you used to have in your collection that's feel like not with you anymore? There's a couple. Quite regret? Uh, one of them was when I was working at Foot Locker in 20, like 11 or something mm -hmm. like that. And this was, I mean, I've never discussed this on here, but that was like during that whole like peak, like, me, like Americana menswear era where I was yeah. wearing. <laughs> I'll never wear sneakers again. Yeah. I'm yeah. considerably wearing more like hard bottom shoes and boat shoes yeah. and chucks and all that sort of stuff. And I had a pair of, actually had a couple of shoes that I there was a couple of guys that I worked with who were like the same size. And I had a mm -hmm. pair of like the history of air, air 180s, the OG yeah. ones, which I mean, you can get. Ultramarine color. Yeah, you can get now, but I love that shoe. Yeah, and all those I, history of air ones. Yeah, and I just, uh, I just gave it to a guy I was working with. I was like, here, take it. Um, and then there was also these like, uh, like kind of, I guess they're OG now. It was like a 2000 nike like running shoe for, that was made for the olympics that had like it was like red white and blue and gold laces and mm. stuff which that's a shoe i probably should have kept on you know because it's like mm. one of those like obscure sneaker sort of shoes where yeah. you're like and i just gave them to a co-worker i was like here take these they're a little too big on me and i just good samaritan yeah. at least nobody was giving them away on your behalf <laughs> like, yeah mom. I, I think for me one of the one of the funny moments and wealthy i know you will remember this but actually was kind of my fault so i had a friend who i let him borrow a pair of the adidas spezial indoor oh, yeah. court do you remember this well yes i remember this fully i think he was at my house and he just like maybe his shoes were wet at the time or just one of my best friends and i was like yeah you could wear these for a couple of days or a week or whatever and i let him borrow these adidas spezial sneakers and i had already worn them a, a few times but they were pretty clean and i actually think i inherited them myself from nick schoenberger shots to nick from yeah, when he done. left this company to go work at nike mm -hmm. and my friend had these shoes for maybe a week and a half or something and, and they, they were completely cooked they were <laughs> he got i've got, got them back so dog i feel <laughs> like went to the game with you i feel like this is interesting too because you are someone who deeply cares about shoes and i know we made a joke about like you know the beat reeboks and stuff but the majority yeah. of shoes are like you know pristine. very very pristine yeah but i like this you're setting up the cleaning sponsorship yeah right? uh, yeah <laughs> but you surround yourself with a lot of people who don't even see why it would be a problem to yeah. completely torch a pair of shoes within a week's time yeah absolutely so when i i think when he when he brought them back to me i was like uh you could probably just keep them <laughs> i just let him hold on to them and i think years later i i was looking on ebay Actually, this is, you know, I'm not just saying that. I was looking on eBay for a pair, and I managed to find a pair on eBay for just under retail. You so know, I replaced you, them, and I have a dead stock pair. When you had now. originally told me that, I thought it was Justin Bolas who had cooked the shoes, which I would <laughs> oh, not wow. have been surprised by. <laughs> yeah, I, I could see that. All right, so these very special shoes are heading your way. And, and, and actually, that question ties into what we're talking about mm -hmm. today in terms of letting go of sneakers, yeah. stacking up too many sneakers, God. where to put all your sneakers, stuff like that. Yeah, so for that, I think that, We've talked about this. We've kind of like broached the subject. And I think that it kind of goes in waves. Mm -hmm. And I think, to be honest, like quarantine, when everyone was at home mm -hmm. and a lot of people, it was two things for me. Like the last dance, definitely, which we referenced earlier in this episode, and being at home around all the sneakers, it did make me like dig through, reorganize, mm -hmm. and look at shoes that I forgot I kind of had. And... I think that there's instances like that where it kind of like gets brought up 
again, like the collection and shoes that you didn't realize that you had. And yeah. then you like sift through. And I think that the majority for, for me, it was like the Jordan ones when, when that episode went up mm -hmm. on the last dance episode, I was like, I couldn't, um, I couldn't believe like all the Jordan ones I had. And I was like genuinely excited that I had them and I hadn't seen them probably in, in years. Let's, I feel like maybe just to start this, just to preface it all, just for context for the audience, I think we should all say how much sneakers we think we own at this point. Oh, I'm not, I don't, I wouldn't, no. No, but you don't have like a ballpark estimate no. of like, I own like a thousand pairs of shoes or? No. You own less than a thousand, right? I don't know. You have no idea? No. Wealthy, how many do you think you own? I mean, it greatly fluctuates because as we can go into like, have you counted at all I, there have been times where i've Estimations, counted Estimations, right have like, you yeah i've i've tried where it's like you just Interesting. you just look at a stack and you're like oh that's 12 how many 12s do i have yeah okay. or I, there's times where i've counted certain amount but there's also times where you know we can get in we're going to get into it but like purging so it kind of you know yeah and we've all all also have accumulated a lot of shoes that yeah. maybe we've given away here yeah, and there yeah, or, yeah, or stuff that we get sent you know that like if you were to keep all the shoes that you had been given and never got rid of anything mm -hmm. so that's interesting though what was your last estimate people always ask this, i would say way. maybe and at this point with everything because it's tough too because i feel like it's not a ton but i feel like i have like 40 plus shoes like at the desk sort of situation you, you definitely do <laughs> I yeah have pairs of shoes sitting like right i there. haven't counted but you definitely like, yeah but i probably have like maybe upwards of maybe like 300 350 mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like that i think i'm probably around there i think i was closer to 600 or something but i i moved last year and and also because of quarantine and i was just thinking about how <laughs> many shoes i own i was really really motivated to get rid of a bunch of stuff you do a bulk did you do a bulk sale um i i did a couple chunks and i i shipped like 160 pairs off to a consignment store so that was big like before i moved because in in my old living situation at the old place i used to live at i just had shoes in my room too so it was like stuff stacked up and again this is a thing i think about all the time is when do i start getting rid of shoes yes you know when do i have too many shoes and i was at the point where they were all over my room stuff would fall over you know i'd wake up in the morning and there'd just be like boxes falling over come back from vacation oh dude that's the boxes that's, falling that is over the <laughs> worst we had a spare in the room middle of the night when it happens sometimes yeah. Yeah. oh my so, god so this was kind of what made me think about it the most recently was last year when i moved and i was like i need to get rid of a ton of stuff and cut it down considerably so my goal i set for myself was i think get rid of around 250 pairs of shoes and i managed to between giving stuff away or selling small batches or sending stuff off for consignment this might be a random question have you guys ever thought about it kind of like the baseball card market though obviously where like the value that things are going to have not even value per se mm -hmm. but also if a silhouette five years from now becomes super popular mm. and like that you have a a rare yeah i mean like I, a rare I do a, lot because... a rare makeup of that silhouette that not even from a value perspective but yeah. like maybe one of the first ones made yeah i i think of it from a value perspective but also like oh i want to have the first colorway of this and that's what i mean for that reason a lot of times i won't get rid of anything within the first two years of owning it like when you bought I, the one thing that you were big on yeah. was like the Vapor Max when it first dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like accruing so many Vapor Maxes or Zoom Flies. Like, yeah. I felt like I was trying to own every Zoom Fly colorway at one point. And now I look at my shoes and I'm like, <laughs> do I really need 19 pairs of Zoom Flies? Yeah, and that, that Probably happened to no. me with like the Clot Haven. <laughs> yeah. But a perfect example, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, think about we just talked about the multicolor fly knit. Yeah. That shoe isn't reselling for that crazy no, but, but to, I'm happy have, to have those so exactly me too like super happy to have those the yeah. thing that i that i realized though and i've done i would say three significant purges mm -hmm. like not talking about like oh i sold these 10 pairs of shoes or yeah. you know i gave even uh last week i had like six or seven pairs of shoes on my desk that i just put on the free table yeah, in the yeah office we give and, away shoes all the time yeah. just yeah. for the record yeah so um, Shout out to It's the Soul. Yeah. Yeah. And I did 40 two weeks ago to It's from the Soul, uh, which is a great nonprofit yeah. organization. It's from the soul.org. You could read all about it. And I got rid of 40 pairs yeah. and they refurbish it and they give them to the homeless and people in need. And getting rid of those, I want to do that every, I want to yeah. do f at least yeah. 40 yeah. a couple months. The other thing that I realized is that getting a shoe that you know that you're not going to wear that someone else may 
be yeah. appreciated. Like literally sometimes in my apartment for like just giving it right away. Yeah. You know? It's a good just so, it's, a good just so it's out of sight, out of mind. Exactly. Right away to someone who who may appreciate it more. And that's what I've been doing. But the It's From the Soul purge was really good. And I want to keep doing that. And yeah, you were going to say no, something? No, so I've had like three significant purges, I think. There was one maybe like four or five years ago where I just went through all this stuff. And I'm like, this is I'm never going to wear this stuff. I had like, you know, Disney vans that you get sent. You're like, dude, like, I'm just, I need to get rid of this stuff. So yeah. I got rid of probably like... 50 pairs at mm -hmm. that point, which felt like a lot, because you're like, oh, I freed up so much space, and then you get so much more, you know what I mean? It, it piles on. And then I think we had a shoe drive in the office mm -hmm. where I would, like, every single day, I'm like, this is finally opportunity, yeah. and it was just like, choosh, choosh, yeah. choosh. and then this, and I had put it out there, like, this spring or whatever, I had gone through it, and I got, I think I got rid of, like, 60 or 70 pairs. And a lot of it was like, and this is what you're talking about, this connects to the mm -hmm. fly knit thing, is that there's a lot of shoes out there where you're like, oh, yeah, the shoe, I've had the shoe for, like, eight years or whatever, but you go back through it, and you find a pair of sneakers from, like, 2015 that maybe you had worn... 15 times which doesn't seem like 15 a lot. is generous the, the shoes i have like this i've only worn yeah. it twice no but there's certain shoes that you know you wore i don't know how you guys are the way but there's yeah. like certain periods where like you know you kind of have like a smaller rotation that you kind of cycle through totally or those shoes for like a couple weeks couple months yeah and you wore them like 15 times or whatever and then you put them away for that long a period of time and then when you pull them back out and you're like just something happens to them in the box and you're like dude these things are cooked like um. Way worse than you remember. Well, or you you didn't even realize that you got like a stain on it or something yeah. like that. And the stain turns into this whole oh. just like yellow, like <laughs> erosive thing, like eating through the toe box. It's also funny though, I think that we're in the time where you're not sure if when you go to buy a sneaker that's relatively easy to get, mm -hmm. if it, there's going to be like a uptick in hype. Right. Perfect example for me, the Nike React 87. Oh yeah. yeah. I gave away like five brand new pairs of them in that purge. Yeah. But I also really liked the black and gray one, which I wore for the Ronaldo episode yeah, of Sneaker yeah, Shopping. Yeah. And that I, shoe was so hot when it first came out. I wore out. Hell them. Yeah. And, and you want to talk about going from here to here? But Is that shoe totally dead now? Ye, uh, I don't, I, I, I which, mean. Which had a quicker death, that shoe or the Jordan Future? <laughs> Jordan future. But like that's a perfect example. I had like from Foot Locker, I had like multiple pairs of it yeah. because I was wearing it so much. Yeah. And I was like, I just would want another pair of these while I could get them. But yeah, those like three or four pairs brand new. Wait, didn't we call that shoe the sneaker of the year one year? I yeah. think so. Yeah. I, 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 that <laughs> it's one of those that. ones that did, did not. We? Yeah, I think so. We rank in. Yeah, that shoe didn't age well. Okay, fair enough. But I mean, right. that's what this is I about. Like Looking it. back at the old yeah. shoes that you have in your collection and realizing that, oh, maybe these don't age well or I don't need these anymore. And I think it's interesting too. I don't know about y'all, but I'm at the point in my life where I, and this sounds hypocritical because I'm still accruing shoes at a, at a high rate, where I want less shoes. Like I remember being yes. first into sneakers or being around 17 and being like, I can't wait to have a rotation or a collection. Or you somebody have, being the, like, the more you, the more shoes you had almost like validated you more within this space. Exactly. And and I remember somebody being like, you'll, you'll get there one day. You'll have a, a, a bunch of different sneakers you can choose from. And then I remember I got there and then I got to be the kid who was in his dorm room and had all the SB boxes stacked mm -hmm. up and it was cool to show people. And then when I was living in my own apartment later, having shoes all around, my yeah. living room because there was nothing in there and I didn't spend any time in there. Uh, do, you, do you remember when other people in your life started to realize that about you, that you were the person with a bunch of boxes stacked up? Was there ever a moment like that? The finish line days, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. That because, early on? Yeah, because I think be before then, I was just still getting one or two a year, yeah. honestly. Like, and then when I started at finish line and working, like I said, it was just spending all your money on spending sneakers. the whole check on sneakers. Yeah, and and the the money that you were making as like a sixteen year old kid going right into yeah right back into the mall, whether it was the food court for lunch or the finish line when I was working, getting sneakers. Yeah, I think part of it was like early on, you know, talking like fifteen years ago, there wasn't as like that's when like I won't I don't want to say it's when sneaker culture started or whatever, mm -hmm. but there weren't as many people that were like sneaker collectors that like just everyday sort of people you ran into you yeah. know what i mean so when people found out that you had 30 40 pairs of shoes they're like holy hell what's wrong with you you yeah, know what yeah. i mean like sort of like it was they, an anomaly yeah they thought it was just weird yeah you know but i mean that passes and then it gets to this point where like you sometimes you tell people you have a lot of shoes because i mean i don't know how you guys are but i I feel like I keep my 
work life and my like personal life like kind of separate. Like I don't, okay. I don't hang out with like a bunch of sneakerheads. Like no disrespect yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Like I just whatever. So when people like, like do come over my apartment, they're like, "Wow, you really were into sneakers." Like I didn't believe it, you know. Like yeah, yeah. When they see like you know three hundred boxes or something like that. Yeah, but I'm at the point where I want less. Like in my head, I think about it often. How nice it would be to cut everything down and only own a hundred pairs of shoes. And to a normal person, that still sounds crazy, and it is crazy because nobody needs a hundred pairs of sneakers. But I would love, and this is my my long term goal, to only own a hundred pairs. And I'm like, okay, I could do thirty pairs of Nikes. 15 pairs of Jordans, you know, we're at 45. You know, I've, I've broken down those numbers a lot, like 10 pairs of Reeboks, 10 pairs but of Adidas. But it's tough, though, because then you get to the point where, like, you want to, like, break it down to that, but mm -hmm. then you have to start wearing your sneakers considerably more because you have less shoes, right? right? Like, so it's like yeah. your rotation shrinks, so then your sneakers are going to get cooked faster and everyone wants that feeling of the fresh shoes so even when you get to the 30 pairs you're like maybe I need it'll to get, never happen but you get more shoes you have do you have any desire to be like a collector i do but i just think that i have a lot of stuff and wealthy's mentioned this before i have a lot of stuff in my collection that i don't care about that much or just such random things that i bought you bought and sit on in like, the past decade and it's like i feel like i could have a nice collection of 100 sneakers that are just the hundred best shoes that I own, and that would be better than four or five, or what did I say earlier? Three hundred yeah. pairs of random things, you know. And then you would have like a tight rotation. Yeah, I think so. I because mean, because I'm, I'm talking about sneakers like you open the Nike SB box and you're like, I have these in my collection. Dead stock. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. I don't know if I feel like you would have more done. <sighs> yeah. But you're also, I feel like I out mean, of the Nike decade. Yeah. I'd like to have that stuff clean. Out of the I guess maybe, maybe see, I've, I've already broke the 100, you well, know, that's like, the hypothetical. And, and to be honest, like, I think there is something to say. We are collectors. Yeah. We, we like, would you consider you're a collector? No, I you don't. Would, no, really? see, I, I have I, a lot of shoes, but I feel like I have friends who are, like, actual collectors, mm. and I feel like I don't come anywhere near that pursuit and that obsession yeah we're like there who who uh i mean there's people like uh kevin lister who's been on the podcast oh, before where he's a example. he's a collector richie or, rojas yeah my friend richie who does new balance 365 and uh, are they go, like is rob rich, store looking Thomas on ebay Lady. for random okay they're going getting things from japan and, yeah. and then like they're new so much more precious korea once they're so much more precious with their stuff where like they need all like the original packaging and they like all their shoes are like neat and pristine and like even the way they store their shoes like the yeah, do you guys worry about storage like because the, I, I he has the craziest sometimes. storage situation i feel like out of all of us <laughs> Wait, can we talk about it joe what is it i mean you have your own closet in the office that's not crazy I, I've never had I, my I own thought closet. you were saying that they were going to be precariously stored, like no. things are uh, falling over and things like that. I just like, I, I do we worry about temperature? Should we be temperature uh, control? So like, I, 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 this, I do worry this, about that, especially with the floods recently. We well, saw people whose sneakers were floating through their basements and stuff like that. Well, to be honest, what I would say, and not that you talk about the packaging and the collecting, yeah, you know, I, I have windows in my apartment, and every box was turning. And Yellow. I know this sounds nice. This may sound naive. I think I even texted you guys. Yeah. Hey, does like the pink boxes turn white? They do. Like they pale, do. Right? They do. Yeah. All my boxes are turned like all the some of the pink SB boxes are like white now. See, that's the sun, thing. I feel like we, we gotta we gotta start that, worrying about that type of stuff too. Yeah. How, Which how is naive like, are we being just leaving them in their cardboard boxes? Yeah. yeah. I want I want to do a quick PSA, and I don't want this to sound jerkish, but I get this a lot. No, I get this a lot. And because I've given away a lot of shoes, I've donated a lot of shoes to Salvation Army. I've yeah. given a lot of shoes to coworkers, you know, like mm -hmm. family members, all of that stuff. But there's people out there online who are like self righteous about what you should do with your sneakers that you want to get rid of. Mm. And they'll come in your comments when you're like, hey, I need to get rid of 15 pairs of shoes. Either one, you just ship it to them, or two, you need to give it to like such and such organization or whatever. With all due respect to all of that, it's like, I just feel like if I'm, I'm going to drop my shoes off at Salvation Army or Goodwill or whatever, it's yeah, like- Nobody should have an issue with that. No, but there's people- Or it's from the soul. But there's people who just kind of feel like they know what's best for you to how to get rid of your shoes. And it's almost like an issue that you're not getting rid of them this way. It's like, please, everyone out there, let me handle giving away my shoes the yeah. way that I deem that I want to give them away. Yeah. 
I, I think one reason for giving away two is not getting to the storage unit level. Like, I never want to own a storage unit. Nope. Imagine paying for... Exactly. At that point, you're hustling backwards. Like, if you have so many shoes where you're paying for a storage unit, in my opinion, this is just for me personally, at that point, I need to start getting rid of stuff. Unless you are, like, a full-time, like, reseller. reseller yeah. yeah Joe, you... Joe, you seem like you might... I mean, when I see, like, Russ in his storage unit, I'm yeah. always interested. I mean, I'm interested, but I'm also interested. it looks like hell, and that's with all due respect to our friend I mean, Russ. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to be in that zone where I have a bunch of stuff stored away that I'm paying money just to have it. But take his 100 shoes, for example. I would love to get there. 50 even. Yeah. I think that would be You don't tough, think I'll ever like, get there? No, I mean, I just think that 100 goes, like, quick. With 30 all due Nikes. Respect. All due respect, I think 100, like... 15, yeah, but then you, new how thing, many do you have at your desk right now? New <laughs> things like are going to come out. New yeah, things are going to yeah. come out that you're going to want. You're going to get sent more shoes that, like, you're not going to say no to it, you know, where it's... <laughs> wait, 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 sorry. Where no, were you... storage unit, I think, for, like, stuff, like, if you're into... Like, I wonder if Kevin has a storage unit. Kevin Leister? I think, I mean, I don't know. And do I, I those think serious he, I think collectors he, have? I think he owns a house, but... Yeah. Uh, that's do those serious collectors have storage units? I think organized in, a in like, a safe, yeah. controlled environment? Yeah. If it helps Maybe. with the environmental stuff for the long term, I, I could see it for that. But, again, I just... It feels like, to me, having a lot of shoes is like a problem in it some is. ways, and it's like I it's, a, a, it's a way to not think about the problem instead of actually solve it. Yeah, because I, I have like a two bedroom apartment, and you know I live by myself, and it's like I have my bedroom, a second room, and then like you know the rest of my living space. Mm -hmm. But like the second room is just all sneakers, and it used to be. You know, there were sneakers against the wall, and then there was kind of like it wasn't like an office space, but there was still just some more like room, yeah, in there. And now the room is just all shoes, <laughs> and I don't like that. You but know, you what I remember, mean? you remember being young and thinking that was cool, right? Yeah, but now it's it almost feels like at this point, and I don't want to sound like, uh, no, I don't want to sound like I'm not grateful that I've had the opportunity to. Mm -hmm get this stuff and all well, that and sort of stuff pay, like this is stuff that we've yeah, pay, paid yeah. tens of yeah. thousands of dollars you know for. but it's like it's some at some point it's almost like a burden of just having that much stuff where your life just feels cluttered yeah you know yeah and you just want to get you want to that's what i return to yeah. all the time do, do you guys have this thing that i have where you think about a shoe and you have to find a shoe and sometimes this actually yes. happens to me before i'm going yeah. traveling and i'm like oh i want to wear this shoe for this event and you have this sudden fear that you, you don't, don't own that shoe anymore or you you can't account for where it is and you spend 47 yep. minutes undoing stacks. I yes. don't have any shelves. I just have yes. stacks. So yeah. very carefully taking apart the Jenga yeah. uh, that, that's been calculated in the corner of your room and, and looking for something at the bottom. Like, do, do you feel that way about having all Definitely. these shoes? Yeah. And then it's such a relief when you find them. Oh, my God. But when you don't, and I feel like anything, you could apply this to anything about, like, if you have a lot of something, like, and you're like, where is that shoe? And you're like, I haven't seen that shoe in a long time. It may be gone. And then it's like, yeah, in a stack But you almost somewhere. feel like you forget to, to some degree. And I feel like that's what my issue is a lot of the times where it's like, you just have so much that it's just a it's a pain to try and like calculate like what you're going to wear every morning. Like you do have three hundred and plus pairs of shoes. <laughs> I mean, that's the funniest thing, and people say that all the time. Is yeah, it, but it, you're not like going like you're not looking at the wall of like neatly like all these shoes are displayed, and you're just like, which one am I going to pick today? And yeah. You kind of like you at least have shelves though, right? I do, but the shelves are completely full, so everything's just over flooded at this point. You know what I mean? And it's like, and I thought about like stacking everything up in front of it but then i'm going to block everything behind it so it's just like i need to get rid of a lot but you then you get into the habit of only wearing six or seven pairs of shoes because you don't want to go through your 300 pairs of shoes to find something so you're just you get new shoes but then they end up getting beat even faster because you know you don't cycle through this whole collection <laughs> at the same time i know this is like major first world problems and people are going to call us out in the comments for saying oh well i mean this is like the reality of being a person who's obsessed with this stuff and again spending tens of thousands of dollars just buying shoes for so long for so many years i've, I've slowed down a lot yeah there was a period in 2014 where I would buy five pairs of shoes in a month and it wasn't a big deal to me. And this is like personal stuff, not like on the resale tip, you know, just, and, and those are the things when I look back and you're talking about finding random stuff, I'm like, I bought this. I feel That's like you were, this? you're like, you were like a big buyer when it came to like, just like you said, like buying like 
random like you're like oh i think i should just get this white but, on white hirachi lights <laughs> like or or you know i guess maybe that she was worth more but i remember that one time you like had sent me to go to the um i was going that way anyways but i went to it was like air max day and i went to like nike town and bought you those uh Anaver air max zeros is that what it was yeah yeah I have, I have multiple pairs of air max zeros for no reason just things that i felt like i needed to participate in and i'm glad to have curbed that urge a little bit in the past decade because i'm really at that 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 zone right now so i shared mine which was like the react 87 yeah. mm -hmm. and the clot haven what shoes did you buy multiples of that didn't really like you won't wear again or i have too many vapor max actually i've gotten rid of a lot of them but that was the one where you know four years later it's like mm, i don't I, I don't need all these zoom flies for sure even though i loved that shoe at the it's time great, and i still love yeah. that shoe i i really I was trying to own every colorway, mm. and I, I got kind of close at, at the moment when they were released. What so. is that special one that you have, though? Oh, the the Zoom Vapor Fly Elite, the the marathon one. Yeah, like, how yeah. so three thousand dollars shoe or something. I don't know if anyone's gonna pay for that anymore. Yeah, but what's but the deal? What those like barely released? I think that's the Chicago Marathon colorway, yeah. and that was like the actual shoe that the three guys who originally did the breaking two attempt ran in which nike didn't really make a lot of those so they were doing super limited runs of those after that for a while so that was one of those pairs i think i wore them to complex con which is a, a stupid shoe to wear to complex con because you like wore that you wore that in shoe. 2017 the first full size run at complex con yeah that's right With i wax. remember it felt like i was bouncing around the floor so, because yeah. it's such a wobbly shoe and I, I, it would help me run from the bait booth to the undefeated booth to the union booth or something like that and vapor maxes were you running in them or just for, no, no not not really uh what else I mean, a lot of Flynet racers, actually. I, really? I, I had so many Flynet racers at one point. It, it, it was just easy to buy them, and I just, I liked the shoe, yeah. so. But I, How much I, tech fleece did you own at one point? <laughs> I never got super, super big into the tech fleece. I was excited when it first came out, but I don't think I owned more than four or five tech fleece pieces. One thing I would say about tech fleece, you find them in your closet. Like, when I go home, I have, like, a pretty fairly new pair of tech fleece sweatpants. Yeah. They're still great. Okay. They're still great. I think I recently... Blacks, the black, like, tech... They're still great. I they're think comfortable, that man. That was one of those things that I was I finally went through the clothes as well. You Shout know? out to Amaya, the tech fleece <laughs> king. There, there was... there. <laughs> I, I think that's one of those things that I found where just, you know, you have stacks of old sweats and all that sort of stuff, and you're, like, you're like donating all of, like, the sneakers as well. You're, like, I started donating the clothes, and I found a pair of Nike tech fleece sweatpants. So you're like, Did you try them on? I'm just, I'm, I'm, not, I'm never going to wear these again. Uh, you know, I, I these, things are like seven years, these things are like seven years old. I'm not like even more than, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of getting rid of stuff, and, and I feel like even though we're talking about getting rid of stuff to some extent or to varying degrees, like Joe mentioned, it's hard not to still add new stuff to your collection. Have you guys ever thought about imposing this kind of rule where if you buy a pair of shoes or if you get a you pair of shoes, pair you away. have to get rid of, yeah, you have to give away a pair, or, you know, you have to, it's like one in, two out or something like that. Not not like a strict rule, but it kind of happens organically, I mm -hmm. think. And I Just th making room. And I think even though with the the question like regretting giving or giving away a pair of shoes yeah. that like back in the I, – I would say that like it feels good to give shoes away basically. And more often than Unless not – Unless your mom did it on your back. Yeah, more often than not you don't really miss them and they're yeah. going to a place where, where people are – not that – yeah, people appreciate it. He has that look on his no, face. No, I'm laughing about this because the reality of this whole situation is just hitting me right now. How much our DMs are going to be flooded by the people watching this oh. who are going to say, you guys have all these shoes. Here's my size. Here's my address. <laughs> I don't know how many of those I'll be reading. Wealthy, are you... Do you know what I mean? Well, do you, have a, do you have a sneaker that didn't age well? You're so quick to call, oh, this didn't age well. <laughs> do you? I mean, that you had like multiple, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I have, to... <laughs> no, I have. I have. He remembers all our, our, yes. our mistakes Misses. of footwear purchases. Yeah. So, wealthy, please tell us what did I have that didn't age well? Yeah, um, or, or it's just all flawless. Yeah. No, it's a flawless victory. Yeah, <laughs> the discography is just <laughs> yeah, flawless. It's all hits. <laughs> uh, one shoe I can say that I ended up only one. No, 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 no. This is like a one that I discarded that I remember wearing. Um, I don't I don't remember if I had purchased it or not, but that I remember wearing this and I'm like, wow, I will never wear this shoe again. Um, I think it was a, a Life Puma, like R68 or whatever. Yeah. Silver. 
Mm-hmm. And I remember like taking that out and it was just like an all silver shoe. And I'm like, I wore these at some, I wore these at some point. How did I do this? But a, a lot of the one thing I do want to say though, like the shoes that we say that we had multiple pairs of, like the Clot Haven, I love that shoe. It's just, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You I, just I, don't I bought need, too many. Yeah, yeah. I just bought too many of them. That's, I, I still like the Flying It Racer, but I don't need that's what I want to make clear. Like, different I, colorways. Yeah. I love that shoe. I, I just think, bought like, the lime green one, I bought like two or three pairs yeah. of them off Nike.com, and I I only needed one. That's what I'm saying, but I, yeah. it doesn't take away from the shoe at all because I, I love that shoe. I definitely ditched my. I had a pair of uh, Oreo Flyknit, the first one mm-hmm. that came out the racers, and I had worn them a bunch. And that that's I'm saying like a shoe that like you would have worn a bunch in 2014 and you take it out the box now and you're like, oh, where is at some point? And the midsole's like compressed and like cooked mm-hmm. and you're just like, there's no way I'm ever going to wear these shoes again. So I just donated them, you know. Oh, 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 oh every, every Chucka, color way of the, yeah, Fly Knit Chucka for sure. I had so, the Fly Knit Chucka, the red Fly Knit Chucka was like, and then I, and yeah, then I had. Yeah, you were big into that shoe. Big into that. And that yeah. one kind of came I still came want the HTM ones kind of. The HTM ones. I really great. wanted the, the HTM, HTM ones. Do you ones, have those? I no, bet you did. but they're great. No. Was that the light gray and the blue? Yeah. Oh, they're great. Shoe that But I, that kind of shoe came and went. Yes, the yeah, Chukka. A little yeah. bit. Shoe that I remember getting, same that whole fly knit vein that I was hyped on, especially because I got it for cheap, but was the worst shoe ever. I think I can say this is probably one of the worst. Oh, wor- I love the- this. More Let's uh, see. more admission. Yeah, one of the worst shoes I've ever owned was, the, and I don't, I don't know if I talked about this before, but it was the the first fly knit free run, possibly one of the Oh, old. right. Super constricting, yeah. right? I don't know who's ever watching this, but whoever designed that shoe at Nike, you did an awful job. Wow. wow. Um, oh, man. <laughs> did you have the rainbow pair? No, I had the blue pair and the volt pair. I got both at the outlet in like, it's one of those things that, like, I guess it was, like, not cool, cool, but it was, like, oh, Nike's making uh, technological advances at the time, you I know. I mean, Flyknit, at the yeah. time, it was fun to just buy everything Flyknit. There were so many new Flyknit sneakers. Flyknit Hyperfeel, like, why did I buy that? That shoe just does not work with how your foot is shaped. And I may, I know maybe for one person it does, but you said super constricting. Mm. I remember just putting that on and just feeling, like, literally, like, the blood was getting, like, cut off, like, flowing into my foot. <laughs> But a lot of shoes in that era, you look at the Roche one where it gets hated on now. The Roche yeah. one, Kanye was like on record saying that the 350 was yeah. like based on the Roche run. And, and I'll never and, turn my back on that shoe. I mean, I won't wear it again, but that was a fun era no matter definitely. what anybody says. I had a pair of Roche mids. That was maybe the bad Roche oh, wait a minute. That, was, that, that, wanna... that, that might have been the turning point for that shoe. And Walter, you talk about going to outlets too. And to me, that's been another shift in my personal sneaker purchasing habits oh, to where when I was in college... I would go to the outlets just to go and find some something that was that, cheap. Yeah, and it was like, oh, it's cheap. Cool, I'm gonna buy it. I might buy two pairs. I might try and hold down somebody. These days, I I really don't do it like that. Or even going to like the Nike employee store, it's it's getting stuff for other people. You know, buying socks. You know, socks yeah. and stuff like that. Where you're not just like buying stuff because it's cheap. Shout out to my people, but I was I was there a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, Aiden and Orlando. Everybody who said hi, we appreciate you. Yeah, I don't think it was. Outlet, for Sean. outlets as much for me but like you're saying like in college it was like i was like heavy in the thrifting yeah and you would just for like, sneakers no oh okay but like you know polo like, sweaters uh like made in usa like flannels and stuff like yeah. that and you just buy like a ton of them because you said it was cheap you're like oh it's four dollars and all this and then all of a sudden you accumulated all these things that you're like i'm just not gonna wear it again i i try not to do that with sneakers anymore like when when somebody says that Bodega has a sale or Essence has a sale, I'm not going to the sneaker section. I'm not just buying the sneakers because they're cheap. I've I've really tried to tried to avoid. One that thing I passed on recently, even though it was cheap, and I guess that maybe I had that thought in my head of like, do I need to get another thing that just because everything you add just gets added to the pile, you know? Like you said, like if you're not getting rid of stuff, you're just adding more stuff, right? Mm. And I really wanted those uh, National Park Foundation Audilet slides. Okay. They say like I think they say like National Park Foundation on it, and they're like made of Cador or whatever, but they're really nice. But I was like thinking the same thing. You're like, I'm adding more stuff to what I have. I have like three pairs of slides that I already wear, and then these are fifty bucks, and that fifty dollars can go towards something else. And I guess maybe this is like maturing and trying to like be smarter with decisions, you know? Yeah. But yeah. 
We need to set up like a reality TV show or something where somebody just comes and helps us, at least for me personally, get me down to 100 pairs of sneakers. And, you know, also what I would encourage like the the listeners, if you are looking to like part with your sneakers, there is a lot of good organizations. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, look look up in your city and and definitely like shoe drives and things like that. You know, we're lucky. I'm lucky that that It's From the Soul is like basically Brooklyn based. And and but I think city. Um, there's a lot of uh, opportunities in, in different cities as well. So Yeah, and a lot of good ways to make use of your sneakers that you don't want. Anymore. Definitely. And you, oh, like, the one thing that I have that I found with doing that is that, like, if you can find, like, a good place to put it, but, like, also, like, the most convenient for you, it's going to help you get rid of, you know, the most because it's, like, you don't want to have to drive, you know, yeah. two hours with 50 pairs of shoes. You have to rent a van, you know, yeah, or yeah, it's yeah. like I had to call my friend, Tony, to go, like, help me because I don't have a car. Tony Wahesh? Yes, Tony Wahesh, shout out. Uh, he had to drive me to the to the local Goodwill, you yeah, know, to drop all this stuff off. So it's like, it's not taking time and energy out of your life, but it's like, it's not as easy sometimes to really unload these things as just like you kind of wish. So you kind yeah. of have to put the effort out there to to do it. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, there's a there's a lot of effort that goes in. It, it, by the way, Joe, I gotta ask you. It sounds like Wealthy and I are more focused on getting rid of stuff than you. Or even when I mentioned that 100 number, do you think you would ever try and get down to? Is is I that a put goal a number for you? On it. Yeah, and I don't have a goal, but. I would like to, I, I am going to consistently get rid of more in bulk. Just donate stuff every couple of months. Just in bulk, not yeah. one-offs. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. To be honest, like, one-offs is one thing, but bulk, yeah. yes. Wealthy, what about you? Are you? Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe it's changed. Not not me wanting to give things away has changed, but I was always very big into, like, trying to, like, bless people. Yeah, people you know. That's, that's In the fun, office yeah. where, like, you'd see people and you're, like, thinking – who would like this shoe, you yeah. know? And it's like whatever, and you kind of just try to like, <laughs> gi- like try to give it to them. Yeah, uh, yeah. I know you've regretted some of those. Uh, no, no, <laughs> yeah. No, Dave, yeah. Dave Matthews is behind the screen, like pointing to himself. Oh, yeah. Dave Matthews wants. But you fingers. did bring up a point, didn't you? Say like getting just get ri- like, yeah. You just feel better once it's like once it's gone. Yeah, you yeah. know. And if someone else is gonna appreciate it more, like oh, yeah. why not? Like if there's like someone that you know who's like. Someone that you know, that's an important No, that you I mean, know, it doesn't, doesn't matter, but, like, you know, you can give it, because obviously you can give to organizations and all yeah. that sort of stuff, but it's, sometimes it's, like, your friend, you know, may not be into sneakers or something like that, and they don't even think about it, but, you know, they only have, like, a pair of shoes or, you know, one or two pairs of shoes, but you give them a couple pairs of shoes, and now they have a little, you know, a little rotation or whatever, and it's just... I love that feeling, Put, putting other people on the sneakers. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, and we also encourage... If if anyone out there has like organizations that they want to highlight, drop them in the comments. We're for always sure. on the lookout, and I think informing people of where to put sneakers and and for like a a greater cause, yeah, will will be awesome. And um, yeah, I mean, I think that's yeah. We'll see. We should have like we'll we'll update kind of like the purge in yeah. In a, in we'll a, try. We'll yeah, try to keep purging. Months. Oh, I, I maybe just uh, I don't know if it's a funny word to end it. Was there ever a shoe you guys gave away? that maybe wasn't worth that much at the moment and then all of a sudden it was worth like a ton of money and you don't really regret it but you're like oh shucks that happened i don't remember i'm sure there i mean is. the marrow the marrow no oh yeah i guess that counts jvc thing that we talked about i didn't know if you had something brendan where you were um, like maybe in the moment you were like uh probably but it you know what I, it not not something i regretted is there something for you uh i maybe i don't regret it but i think one of the funny ones is that i had got we had gotten the the sf air force ones yeah for like it was like the complex con exclusive the first one yeah and i had gotten sent a pair and i'm like oh i just won't wear these you know because it's like a super high top air force not one. a that wealthy shoe yeah and i had given it to someone else in the office because i just wanted to give it to him as like out of the I kind the like literally yeah yeah it then got hit up by not to be named or anything, but like by the person who had sent the shoes saying, You need to send those back to me, which was super awkward because I had to go up to the person who I gave the shoes to and say, Hey, I know I gave these to you, but I'm sorry, I need the shoes back. Yeah. But I think I ended up getting another pair of those shoes down the line and I made you, you, good. Yeah, and right. I made good on them. It. <laughs> and I made good on that. But um, yeah. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for listening. Make sure everyone likes and subscribes. Have a great weekend, and we will see you guys next week.